Now we're using mullet, a couple different ways to hook it. I like doing the tail, I feel it gives them a little more movement, keeps them alive. But you can also hook them through the lip, you wanna do it from the head. We'll go over the rig in some detail here. All right, so we're back in the studio. Let's talk about the rigs we're using while we're going out to target these flounder. Here you go, this is the basic rig we were using. Basically a Carolina rig, a little lighter version. So we have a really light weight here. You can even just put split shots. And then we just wanted to catch a lot of fish. So we went with a smaller hook. That's just gonna increase your hookup rate so you can catch smaller fish. Although the one disadvantage, if you hook onto a big fish, it's gonna be hard to get a really clean hook set and then the hook could also bend. So just keep that in mind, whether you're going for quantity or quality, basically. You can use a big hook, get less hookups, a better chance to catch those monsters. Or you can go with smaller hooks, be active a lot more, catch a lot more fish, but it might be more difficult to land the big ones. And that's the perfect set for flounder. That weight's gonna bring your bait, in this case a live mullet, down to the bottom where the flounder are hanging. And then really the way you wanna work is just slowly drag along the bottom, slowly reeling it in. It's gonna bump along the bottom, keep that minnow down there. And when you come across the flounder, whoom, you should take that mullet and then boom, hook set, you're on. Carolina rig, can't beat it. And one of our favorite rigs to use flounder fishing or any other type of fishing. All right, so that's how you rig the bait. Now the technique we're fishing here, we're looking for nice drop-offs. Flounder like to send those drop-offs and ambush their prey. So we're gonna be dragging our bait right along the drop-off. And when you feel like you kind of get stuck, that's generally gonna be a flounder. So just let it take the bait. I usually count to 10, then set the hook. When you fish and catch good fish, make sure you look at the tide. So we're fishing incoming tide. We came out here a little after low tide. Incoming tide, bring in the bait. So we figured the flounder probably stacked it right here at the mouth of this inlet kind of facing out towards the uh, the uh, intercoastal, waiting for the bait to come on in. So we've been pitching our bait that way, dragging it with the current to make it look nice and natural. And that's kind of where I got the hook up on that flounder. I was kind of making it, pulling it in with the current, and then boom, that's when he hit. So make sure you take a note of the tide, and fish changing tides, because that's when the bait's gonna be moving, that's when predator is gonna be turned on. Where? <laughs> what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Loosen up that drag. Loosen up that drag a little bit. Uh, should I just grab him? Yeah. Oh my god. Loosen that drag even more if you can. Luke's got a huge flounder on. Dude. Dude, 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 dude. Oh my god. <laughs> nice, nice, bro, nice. <laughs> Live mullet, man. It is. Ah! No. Oh, <laughs> dude, what happened? There's a doormat. Ah. I don't know what I could have done there. I don't know what. Ah. All right, I hit that doormat right on the nice drop off on this boat channel. And I just felt it felt like I was stuck in the bottom. I was kind of lifting it up and you could feel tension. on. I thought it was a big bull crab and I saw it come to the surface. Big flounder hooked up on him right on the drop off. We're going to put some more bait in that channel. Hopefully we catch another one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, that's why you bring a net. If you guys want to keep learning grade A information about how to catch more fish, be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn those notifications on. We have a wide variety of videos covering multiple species, how to catch them, great tips and tricks so you can catch more fish. Also, swing by our website to get more in-depth information on the gear and tackle that we love to use when going out fishing. It was nuts. That was, it was, that was the biggest Let's flounder I ever seen. That was my PB. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Oh, look. I got puffy fish. Oh, yeah. Look at that big old lizard fish. Catching by catches when you're getting puffer fish by it's live this fish. They're out here. Live mullet catches everything. Oh yeah! 
There's a big old white in. It's a fat daddy. Yeah, another bycatch. See ya. Hey Rachel, how'd you catch that fish? Um, with a mullet right at the drop off. Well. Well. Uh, here, let's let this one go. He's All a little right. too small. Season started the other day. The keeper size is 15 inches. Check your local rules and regulations. And he's 12 and a half. 12 and a half. 13 if we push him right. Look at how pretty that fish is. Goodbye, Mr. Flounder. How's that fish make you feel, Rachel? Really happy. <laughs> so he bit like right when I was pulling it in over the drop off. I was hitting a bunch of oyster shells and then all of a sudden, I feel a little. Boom. Boom. Caught him. Go, Rachel. Time to catch another one. Nice blue. Bye, Rachel. Rachel is catching them. I think this guy's a goner. While we were fishing, something crazy happened. So, Rachel hooked this blue fish. And, uh, you know, she gut hooked it, so it wasn't going to make it. Um, we tried to revive it a few times, you know, put water through its gills, kept it in the water for a little bit, and it just didn't look like it was going to make it. So, we decided to keep it. So, we had the bluefish, had it on the stringer, and, you know, I was like, ah, we didn't really have any method to carry it along with us, so I tied it to my pants. And you don't ever want to do that, ever, um, because of what happened. So, the so next thing you know, I'm walking, I'm fishing, and we're walking back through the mud. It's probably about knee deep. And I start to feel weight on this stringer. Weight starts getting tenser and tenser and tenser. And I'm like, oh crap. I better get this thing untied from me or else I'm gonna lose a pair of pants. Um, so I'm hustling and bustling. I get it untied and I start pulling on the stringer. And next thing you know, boom, this big old ray flaps its wings. And this is what it left it. See, look at its eyes. See all that stuff? Uh, I thought about this beforehand, you know, I was thinking, hey, dragging a stinky blue behind me is probably not the best idea um, in salt water because the sharks and rays that could take it. Um, but that's just a tip to you guys. Don't bring your string fish alongside with you. Find a better method to keep them. Don't keep them in the water next to you or else that will attract sharks and big rays and you don't want those near you because that is dangerous, as I learned today. Learn from others' mistakes, you know. You don't, don't make this error. I made it for you. There you go. And with that, that's how you catch some flounder on live mullet and stay alive. <laughs> See y'all later. <laughs>